Okay, once the cell has done mitosis, which has the four stages, uh, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase, the cell will now have two nuclei. It is still one cell, but the one cell has two identical nuclei at opposite poles. For example, this animal cell and this plant cell right here. The next stage after mitosis is called cytokinesis, which is the cell division stage. And during the cell division stage, from that one cell, it will become two cells, and both cells will have the identical nucleus. That is how the mitotic cell cycle will eventually produce two genetically identical cells based on the diagram of this cell cycle right here. However, what you have to know is cytokinesis in animal cells and cytokinesis in plant cells are quite different uh, from each other. So we are going to compare the cytokinesis in animal cells and the cytokinesis in plant cells. For cell division or cytokinesis in animal cells, the first thing that will happen during this stage is there are specialized microtubules that will start to form at the equator. And at the equator, as you can see that orange color line, they will start to contract. Now, when they contract, they will pull in the cell surface membrane. As you can see here, what's happening to the cell surface membrane, it's kind of going inwards. It's folding inwards. Now, immediately, some students will say, oh, this is endocytosis. While it does look a little bit like endocytosis, it is not. Because in endocytosis, it is supposed to form vesicles. But in this case, the cell surface membrane folds inwards in a very narrow kind of passage. As you can see here, it's forming a kind of narrow passage over there. These things are referred to as something known as the cleavage furrow. And the cleavage furrow forms along the equator. Now, this is a two-dimensional version of it. But if you want to see a scanning electron micrograph of a cleavage furrow, it looks like that. So you can see that it's forming a kind of mouth. It's pursing the lips, so to say, uh, where it's forming on the equator on one side. It's also happening on the other side, by the way, but we can't see it because that's on the opposite end. So, and then eventually the cleavage furrow from both sides will meet and they will form two newly divided cells. A very important thing I want you to notice over here, and I also want you to take note of this if you're writing it in your uh, own notes, the cleavage furrow is only possible if the membrane is fluid or flexible. If the cell surface membrane is not fluid or if it's not flexible, it is very difficult for the cleavage furrow to even form in the first place. And uh, in chapter four, we studied things that ma maintains membrane fluidity, like temperature, uh, the length of the fatty acid chain of the phospholipids, the type of fatty acid chain, unsaturated versus saturated. Uh, we also talked about the presence of cholesterol, which helps to maintain the fluidity. So take note of that as well, please. Now, so once that happens, you will get two newly divided cells which are genetically identical. That is what you have to know about the cytokinesis in animal cells. So for the purpose of the exam, you just have to mention microtubules at the equator contract. It forms a cleavage furrow along the equator, which will then eventually lead to the formation of two newly divided cells. However, in plant cells, there is a little bit of a difference. Now you have this you have the plant cell with two nuclei on opposite poles, in this case one top and one bottom, but the problem is they cannot form the cleavage furrow easily because of the presence of the cell wall. Now even if the protoplast, which is the, which is the cell surface membrane and the cytoplasm and such, even if they can form the cleavage furrow, it is not sufficient because the cell wall needs to split as well or needs to divide. So how does the plant cell do that? In this case here, for the plant cells, the, the plant cells will have Golgi bodies or Golgi apparatus. Now, there will be the Golgi apparatus on opposite poles as well, as I'm representing it over here, the curved membranes with vesicles around them. Now, what the Golgi apparatus or the Golgi body will do is, the Golgi body will package cellulose into vesicles. They'll, they'll put, as you can see, the yellow colored dots, those yellow colored bubbles are just vesicles. 
and they will put cellulose into the vesicles. And what will happen is those vesicles will, as you can see in this arrow here, the vesicles will be transported towards the equator. So the Golgi body produces vesicles that contain cellulose and the cellulose moves to the equator and because vesicles are made out of membranes, the vesicles can fuse with each other. So when those vesicles fuse with each other, it becomes this kind of division in the equator known as the cell plate. The cell plate, you can kind of imagine it to be the young cell wall. Now, why is it the young cell wall? Because remember, inside the vesicles, they contain the cellulose. And in chapter 2 revision, I told you that cellulose is the polysaccharide that is required to build plant cell wall. So more cellulose will start gathering at the equator of the plant cell. And when more cell wall starts to gather at the equator of the plant cell, the cell plate becomes bigger and eventually they will mature. You don't have to go into the detail, but after they mature, they will form the new cell wall. And the new cell wall formed in the equator will divide the two plant cells. As you can see here now, because of that new cell wall that forms at the equator, the new cells, there are now two cells instead of one. There was one cell over here with two nuclei, but now you have two cells over here divided by the new cell wall in the equator. So that's how you get two newly divided cells. So this is the difference between the animal cell cytokinesis and the plant cell cytokinesis. So I hope you understand this.